Wherever you go, you'll never have to be alone. Cause I'll be by your side. All right, Kylie. Hello. So, <laughs> we've been working together uh, for, for quite a while. We've done one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching for six months and then you joined Solve the Overeating Puzzle, which is a nine-week group coaching program um, as well. So we've had a little bit of time together, which is, I think is really beautiful and has been really, really great. What I'd like to ask you is what were the challenges before we started working together? What were your challenges? I probably one of my biggest challenges is I'm that person that was always looking for the quick fix or the next best thing or something that was going to be a weight loss miracle. Um, so attached to the number on the scale um, and not happy with the number on the scale. And I pretty much in the past I've done most things. So I've done Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, um, you know, shakes. I've done lots of different things. And I guess I was often searching for what was going to be the next thing that would help me on my weight loss journey. Um, yeah, that, that was probably one of the biggest struggles. And probably the scales was um, one of my big things. So literally hopping on the scales several times a day and then making that mean something. And it was probably a, um, a deciding factor of how my day was going to go and in turn my week or my month. Mm, okay. So quite common scenario mm. as well, right? And so and then you uh, obviously came across my work and um, what, what I do, what was it that was appealing to you that you thought was different why you decided to join? Um, well, I guess probably because I, because I was looking for the next best thing and because I, I'm also that person, I'll just let this weekend go and I'll start on Monday. And so I was researching online and I had come across your website and I read some of the testimonials. Um, but I guess the things that attracted me was I've got a learning and development background and so I was quite um, interested in the brain side of things. So the NLP, um, the action and behavior therapy. So actually trying to figure out why my brain does what it does and whether if I could figure my brain out, then actually it could make a difference to my weight loss journey. Okay. So, and then um, do you find, so how was it for you figuring out, have you been figuring out um, how your brain works? <laughs> well, that's been really interesting. So, um, you know, obviously we had a couple of face-to-face um, -face, um, coaching sessions in the beginning and then it all went online with COVID, um, which was a little bit of a challenge to be fair to get my head around. Um, to be honest, probably what I thought I was coming to you to get and what I got were two different things. Um, and that took a little bit to get my head around. So I think I thought I was coming to you because you were going to tell me what I needed to eat, when I needed to eat it and how much. And that um, I was going to see this um, miraculous result with weight loss. Um, so I guess um, the coaching quickly helped me realise that a lot of my um, actions are based on my need to control. Um, so that's definitely linked to the scale. So it's a, a mechanism of control. Um, and also um, probably the wanting to follow structure is about control. And what I find is, well, what I found during the coaching is that a lot of stuff was linked. So if I was feeling like life was out of control at work or at home, then definitely I was trying to control the scales or what I was eating. Um, what I got out of my coaching probably in the first six months was more around work um, and work-life balance. Um, it was all during COVID, and I think if I hadn't come to you for the coaching, 
I don't know whether whether I would have managed um, to lead three businesses as well as I did during COVID um, and to keep my, my stress levels and I guess to remain sane um, during that really difficult period. Um, so then during that process, we there was the stop seminar, which obviously we couldn't do because of COVID. Um, but once I had watched it online and then come to the seminar, I felt that I was probably almost ready to then start looking at um, the food and eating side of things. So I think what I thought I was going to get and what I got were two different things, but it's been extremely helpful in life overall. And um, so when did you start noticing, obviously, like you said, and this is also a common thing as well, sometimes we start with a certain idea, um, but our priorities change. As life happens, right, COVID hit us all in a way we didn't even see coming. Mm -hmm. But now all of a sudden we had to deal with other things that were other priorities, while obviously your weight loss was still important to you. But like you're saying, running three businesses, managing people, and still staying sane and actually well enough to be able to do that, that was your priority then. Mm. And then once we got out of lockdown and there was a bit of time so around September, then we could say, okay, we can go now. Like we did the, the seminar, we had the in-person seminar. And then again, the priorities have changed a little bit. And you said, okay, I'm not in a survival mode anymore. I'm not in this fight and flight mode. Now priorities change. And this is very, very common. And I think in general, when we do these coaching, that's why I love to do it over a longer period of time. Because it gives us that time to go through different seasons of life and to have time to work through these different challenges that come up so we are prepared for whatever is coming after that and we have all these tools and strategies to to go forward yeah and i probably one of the biggest successes i've had when it comes to um i guess if i'm thinking about the weight loss side of things is i don't hop on the scales as I hop on the scales, but they're not in my bathroom. And I don't think about them every single day. So they're not the first thing I think about doing when I get up in the morning. And it's not the last thing I do at night before I go to bed. Um, they're just there. And every now and again, I do hop on them just to kind of give me an indication. But when I say every now and again, it might be every couple of weeks versus it was several times a day. Um, I think the... The other thing that I've gotten out of it is the triggers. Um, so just being able to actually recognise what triggers me and then be able to think about whether I'm going to act on that or not. So getting the triggers and the urges but then choosing whether or not I want to act on it. Um, I think another thing is just around restriction. And I've tried to use restriction um, in all areas of my life because I think the restricting thing is very important. So tell myself that I can't have chocolate and, of course, that's all I want. But actually knowing if I want to have a little bit of chocolate every single day, I can. Um, but also that translates into other areas because I think if you decide you're going to try and um, stop spending money and you want to restrict, then suddenly all you want to do is go out shopping. So I've tried to think more about what are my triggers and then think about whether I do want to act on that. And sometimes I am triggered and I decide I want to eat a piece of chocolate, but I eat it and I just don't think about it. Um, I treat probably special occasions a little bit differently because one of your coachings was around... Um, you go to birthdays and you eat a big piece of birthday cake because that's just what you do, um, and that's okay. Um, so I've tried to think about when I go to special occasions, if I eat something, that's because I'm at that special occasion, that's that moment. Um, and also thinking about it's just one meal at a time rather than going, 
well, I've undone all my good work for the week. I might as well just carry on for today or this weekend. I've tried just to think one meal at a time. Um, I haven't got it completely under control, but I feel okay with that because I think you've talked about your history and how there are still triggers and they probably will never go away. Um, but I think the big thing is it's nice not constantly thinking about what I weigh and what I eat. That's um, it's there, but it's not a, it's not at the forefront of my mind all the time, which is I guess gives me freedom, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. And also like checking our expectations, right? So mm-hmm. if we've been conditioned to think uh, about to think and worry and stress about food in our body can, can we really expect from ourselves from ourselves really that within half a year I'm not going to be even thinking about it anymore it's not possible right so really even here celebrating I'm not I, I'm, I'm not so um, obsessed over the scale right from I mean it's huge from several times a day to once in like a fortnight or something like that right that's a huge shift um not needing that control but having more trust in yourself that it will balance itself out also like what what i hear is what you're saying i understand my triggers and therefore i am not a victim of what is happening outside of me i'm the one who recognizes this and then takes charge and then I make a conscious decision. So I am in control of my decisions and I am I'm feeling empowered because mm. I'm the one who drives it rather than something else and I'm just responding to it. Mm. Yeah, so these, these, are huge, these are huge shifts that can be now just built and built on top of it and working against the conditioning that we've all been experiencing. Hmm. And what I've tried to try to focus on, you talked about, you know, if you get one percent every single day, you know, just it builds slowly and slowly. And I think, um, you know, just recognizing what you just said in regards to we're conditioned a certain way, and so rewiring your brain isn't going to happen overnight. Um, and you know, there are going to be ways of thinking that are going to crop up, um, but it's, like, it feels empowering to know that I recognise, yes, that's just a thought, and thoughts are thoughts, and I'm not going to stop having thoughts, but it's about what I do about those thoughts. Right. Yeah. That's exactly that, and I always say, if the only thing that I can teach you is not to respond not to react to those thoughts but actually choosing how you want to respond to them so you feel empowered you take charge of your decisions and actions what else can we expect from ourselves it's a little bit like any learning if you don't keep revisiting it um you know it's easy to to forget what you've learned yes um, it's like when we go to the gym we need to keep going to and build our muscles so they actually stay strong. Mm. You know, we can't go to the gym for half a year <laughs> or a couple of days and then say, oh, for the rest of my life, I'm good. <laughs> so yeah. It's, yeah. And yeah. so like, for anyone who's considering doing um, Stop the Overeating Puzzle, I think one of the great things is um, recording the weekly calls because – there were definitely, and I, I still do now, there are times when I think, oh, yeah, what was it that we talked about? Or And it wasn't even necessarily my own coaching, but maybe you gave somebody else coaching. And I think, oh, yeah, that's really relevant. And it's really good to be able to go back onto those calls and re-listen to the coaching or, you know, that one thing. Because at the end of the day, it's, you know, if we're on the, a call for an hour, it's difficult to remember absolutely everything. So I like being able to go back and revisit those weekly calls. Yeah, 
nice, mm. beautiful. Okay, so what do you? I I I know you've mentioned them already. What do you feel um, have been the most tangible results for you in the entire work together? Um, probably most tangible is probably freedom when it comes to the scales, mm. um, and also I think most tangible probably as just the the way in which I've coped during COVID, um, being a leader, um, you know, helping other people through the process of COVID. Um, and I guess probably most tangible is actually starting to think about what freedom in life looks like for me. Um, so that can be challenging because often it's not what you thought it was going to look like, um, but just thinking, how do I get that work-life balance? How do I take time out for me? Um, and what does freedom actually look like? And I've, I've started the process of working on that, but there's still a ways to go. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting you're mentioning that because um, I truly believe we don't have a food or body problem. I really believe we have a life problem. Mm -hmm. and I really believe and what I see quite often is when there are things in our life that are out of out of balance or out of alignment with our values or we do think or we're in toxic relationship or we're in toxic environment or when our um, job is incredibly stressful that is when we start ha having that's when it starts impacting our health our food choices, um, the need to control our body and weight. And that's why quite often, um, like, yes, we talk a lot, of, we, do, we talk about the food side, but we need to sort our life out. And then quite often this actually starts balancing itself out without needing too much work on it specifically. Totally agree. Yeah. Anything you would like to add, Kylie, before we I, I highly recommend coaching. Um I obviously there's a cost associated with choosing to do it. Um, but I definitely think if you were to weigh up what you were spending in other areas, I think that um you know it's definitely there is value in deciding to invest in you, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's been really, really a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to continuing our work together. Me too. How to be alone, because I'll be by your side. I'll be by your side.